Welcome back to PJ Chain Design. This is PJ. Today in this jewelry cat design tutorial, I would like to show you how to create this double bow knot type of a ring. Are you ready? Let's get started. That's starting from the scratch. We are going to use a circle command coming at the from view and let's make a ring size. Let me snapping into the zero and we want to do the diameter for 16 and I will suggest you do whatever the ring size to start with and we want to come into the top and simply just draw something look like this uh, let's pass the uh, that green line and let's do the first loop and you can trace the design that you like um, or you can just spontaneous like what I did there the second one will be roughly something go like this all right and if you don't like then you can always turn on the control point and you can try to edit the third one i would like to go from here here and go something like this all right so then you will have the design there and we can do the 3d scale if the design is too small and let's just kind of drag it up to whatever size that you like all right so now notice that those are flat on the construction plane. So the next things we wanted to do is we want to have this curve follow this curve, right? So we're going to use the command uh, curve from two view three times. First time pick up this one and this one and you will go both top and the bottom. That's okay. Uh, we can delete anything that we don't need it. So the second one is this one and this one and also one more time this one and this one. Okay, so let's go ahead to delete the one on the bottom. The one in the middle, I just want to hide it just in case we need to, you know, change it. Now we have something like this, um, but like this guy has uh, so many points uh, over there that it's hard to edit something like this. You just basically just get a kink. So what we wanted to do is we want to rebuild this guy to be last point. Currently we have 28 point right here. Um, it's degree three curve and I wanted to make them a little bit less, maybe eight. And um, you want to see if it, you will get a little bit deviation, but since this is more like a freehand drawing, so I think that will be okay. Let's stay with the eight there. As you can see now, we have a last point. This one, it get even more point. Uh, maybe we want to do 12. And you want to see it's only a little bit deviation there, so that's okay. This one, we might want to do five. Okay, so now that's take a look if you just go ahead and pipe all of them something like this and we want to use the pipe command for whatever thickness is close to what you're going to have so that's why I wanted something really um, small thin wire and maybe I want to have a 0.5 millimeter so let me put it into the diameter and we want to record a history here on the bottom and hit enter and you will see something like this right and this is kind of flat it doesn't look as nice so let me mark those curve in the red color so you can see what i have there i simply just want to turn on the control point and i want to starting moving those line like see how the pipe is react and um you do not want anything like inside of the ring definitely uh, we can move everything up all together but at this point we kind of give them a little bit more dimension so like at the very last point of this curve for example i want them to tuck in like back in here right so maybe right here at this point i want to give you more dimension so i want this one going up so you can kind of play with it like up and down and see which one works you know look better each time the design might be different like everybody's design might be different maybe you want this piece on top of this piece it's up to you but i do want to have this one it's kind of a going uh behind the other piece so it might go down a little bit and overall like this guy might going down lower like this so you kind of play with it and see which one that you like right so you keep editing on this control point and the reason we can do that is because we have a history is on 
Okay, so now you kind of play with it. I'm going to stop it right here. All right, the pipe is not as pretty. Let's go ahead and delete this one, this one, and this one. All we need to do from the pipe is to see how the end uh, pieces are we going to have. Now that's coming over here. I mean, coming into the right view, and I want to draw the actual profile. I like to use this one that's called Conic Corners from the rectangle, and I want something about one millimeter. So I'm typing one here and also one, and kind of moving my mouse. Like now I have an arc here, so I'm going to click it for Conic Corner, and we'll get something a little bit round, a little bit square, like this. Okay. And I also wanted to have them to start moving. So this guy, it's going to be moved from this midpoint, snapping to the beginning. And I also want to making bunch of a copy, not bunch, two. Uh, this one's going to coming over here and also coming over here. So each of them has a cross section. The key for a successful sweep is actually you wanted this guy going 90 degree toward to the direction you're going to sweep so you can see that red arrow is facing you know this curve let me do one more time like this guy too we want them to go this way this guy we want it to go this way all right so you will have a better sweep let's take a look on the top all right let's give it a try we want to try sweep one rail. You got this rail cross section. And again, you want to record a history just in case we want to change it, right? It's no harm to, to record a history. It's not going to take too much of a space uh, since it's a simple sweep. So sweep rail cross section. And that's another one rail cross section. And that's another one. All right, double make sure that is exactly what you like. And if you don't like the way it is intersect, for example, I can keep turning on the control point and I kind of move in this edit. Oh, I forgot to record a history on the second one. So let me delete this one. Do it one more time. We want to sweep one. This is the rail. This is a cross section record a history. Uh, you have to remember to record a history. Now, if I turn it on, my control point and keep editing I'll get something like this. All right. If you like the result, just go ahead to pick up the surface one, two, and three, and we want to use the cap command and we'll close it. All right. So now we have something like that. This piece will be hiding behind it. So it's not a problem. This piece doesn't look good on the render. So we want to use the command for fitted edges and simply just give a small fitted like 0.2. And let's pick up the edges over here. And then you see something like this crazy, it's like something is disappeared, only the things that you don't want it. Mean that you probably have a too big of a fillet. So let's try point one instead. And see, it's better. You can still get a little kink. It will show it's a closed solid poly surface here, but I see there's a slice of a surface there. I don't like that. It will potentially create a problem once you turn it into the mesh. So we just need to have a good looking on the render. So I might want to change to something really small, like 0 0.05 here and click on this here and it will be better. Nice and clean. That's what we're looking for. Okay. So now I have the surface of this one, this one, and this one. Coming over to the top view, we simply just go into mirror to the other side. There. Okay. Let's take a look on the center piece. We can starting from sphere and snapping into the zero. And I want to draw whatever size, maybe something look like this. Okay. So now I have the sphere. I wanted to move it to the top. And of course, that's ugly. So let's go ahead to rebuild the sky and to get more point there. And let's say 12. Uh, maybe 10 by 10 is fine. OK, let's click OK. And the orientation is not right. So let me turn it 90 degree right there. All right. So what can we do with this is we can turn on the control point and then we can do a lot of editing. 
First of all, I would like to have this piece to be more like this shape here. Okay. Second, I would like to have a center kind of a tucking, something like this, going smaller, something like this. The top might want it to be wider. So you can kind of drag in a control point to get what you want. Now you can see like it's really pointed there. We want to go in scale 1D and bring this up, right? And see if you like it. And I do like to have a top is more flat. So let me bring this up a little bit so you can see a little bit better. Uh, we can turn on the control point one more time. And to make the top is completely flat, I'm going to pick up all those points right there and use the gumball 1D scale, just type in zero here. So then it will be flat on the top. And also I want those to be wider, something like this. So you can see now we have a shape like this. And then we can move this one back here and see if that is enough to cover all the area that we try to hide in the middle. Let's take a look on the render view. All right. And keep editing until you find a shape you like. Maybe this is too pointed on the top. So what we can do is pick up all the control point and just type in zero on 1D scale, bring it down a little bit so it will be a little bit rounder. We can do the same thing on the bottom. Pick up the bottom, click on here, type in zero, moving up, something like this. All right. And also you can, um, getting, you know, more stuff by maybe you want to have the center part of uh, caving and you can always uh, work on the control point. All right. So the very last things that we have left is to make sure that all of them is not inside of the ring shank. So let's do the inside of the ring shank first. We wanted to creating a uh, conic corner again with the rectangle and this one maybe one point five millimeter by 1.5 millimeter and bring in a little bit like this. Okay. And then you will get this one. Let's move it. Use a move command, move it to the quadrant. So then we have something like this. Let's go ahead to use the sweep one rail to creating this ring shank here and we'll get something like this. All right. So notice that everything is inside of that shape. We need to have them moving up a little bit and they will get something like that. Or you can, you can keep whatever you have there and we just trimming all the extra. As you can see, they are somewhere about here to intersect. So I'm going to draw a straight line on my top view and having that piece, the straight line to mirror to the other side, type in zero here. So now I have two straight lines and then I can go ahead to trim. And sometimes when you trim, you will accidentally trim in the bottom. I just need to try a couple more time and I will get something like this. All right. Notice that this is a little bit stick it out there. Probably we need to move them just a little bit wider or you can make them a little bit thicker by one day scale. Either way that should work. All right. So now I have this um, since we haven't bowling all of them, as you can see, I still have some gap there. Maybe one thing we can also do is I having this piece and this piece and we can rotate it, um, to make sure that they will fitting in the ring size a little bit better, or you can make them a little bit thicker. And, um, at the end you just, you know, bowling difference them. And that way you have a clean cut, uh, for, inside of your ring shank. Okay. So I'm going to stay something like this. Let's go ahead to take a look on the shape at the render and see if anything we need to change. Oh, I forgot to bring up something like this, or maybe my ring is kind of too thick. I wanted to change in the thickness there. Uh, that will work either way that should work. Okay. Um, let me do another things here. We're gonna join it, cap it, and try to give a little fillet and see how that work. So maybe the fillet for 0.2 and see how that work there. All right. Um, it's not 
as pretty as I hope it is. But I think like 0.5 millimeter for that ring shake might be a little bit too too fat for this design. I should use the same thickness. Let, let's try that. Let's go ahead to using 3D scale. And that was one, I believe. Uh, we want to do the sweep one rail, this and this. And it will get something like this. Yeah, it's talking better in there. So we're going to have the same curve, this one and this one. And we want to trim this guy over here. So then it's better looking. All right. So you may want to have the same thickness. And don't forget to join them and also cap them. Okay. I hope you enjoy this video. Thanksgiving is coming and I would like to invite you to join my Thanksgiving mailing list, which I will send it out a bit discount code for Black Friday. It will be only sent it out by email, not posting on any of my social media. So if you're interested in my course, this is the biggest sales of the year. The join link is at the description below. Thank you for watching and I will see you next.